In this tutorial, we'll discuss how to deal with flyaway hair in portraits that utilize a shallow depth of field. If I try to just clone it out, I end up with these little telltale lines where the hair used to be. The cloned area ends up too clean compared to the untouched area, and we end up seeing where we've cloned. Even in very clean images, there is usually some noise present, and this noise becomes part of the fabric of the background. You can readily notice it when the background has midtones and highlights in it. Cloning tends to clear out the noise and leave the cloned areas too clean, leaving clues that something used to be there. So clearly, simply cloning won't work. Trying the spot healing brush isn't much better. It leaves clues as well, and you end up with little foggy areas that degrade the image, and it really doesn't deliver the kind of results we'd like to see. I'd like to point out that our goal is to weed out solitary hairs only in this technique. We'll have to deal with the wild bunches of stray hairs like in this area some other way. We're going to use the dust and scratches filter in this technique. Let's duplicate our current layer by keying Ctrl J, Command J on a Mac, and then we'll go to Filter, Noise, and choose Dust and Scratches. Leave the threshold at zero and then gradually increase the radius value until the solitary hairs disappear. For me, a value of 18 seems to be enough. Don't worry that the rest of the image is blurring out. We'll deal with that shortly. If I toggle the preview on and off, we can see that the noise in the background has also been affected. We'll also deal with that in a moment. Click OK and we'll continue. Next, we'll add a black mask to our blurred layer. While holding the Alt key, option on a Mac, click the mask icon to create the mask. Our blur disappears and we see our original image again. What we're going to do next is add noise back into our blurred layer. Ideally, we want to match the noise level that the original layer has. We'll do it in such a way that we can visually compare the amount of noise we're adding to the new layer while comparing it to the original layer. With the mask selected, use the Marquee Selection tool to create a rectangle selection in an uncluttered area of the background. Ensure black is the current foreground color and then press the Delete key. This will knock a hole in our mask, revealing the blurred layer within the marquee selection. Notice how all the noise has been virtually eliminated. Let's save our selection by going to the Select menu and choosing Save Selection. In the Name field, you can type anything. I'll call it Box and press OK. I'll then press Ctrl D, Command D on a Mac, to clear the marquee selection. Even though the marquee selection is now gone, we're still viewing the blurred layer surrounded by the original layer below. Notice the hole in the mask. Click on the image icon in the blurred layer to select it, and then go to Filter, Noise, and choose Add Noise. Ensure that the distribution is set to Gaussian, and that the monochrome checkbox is checked. Increase the noise amount until it matches the rest of the image. For me, that happens around 3.4%. Click the OK button to accept this. Click on the mask icon to select it, and then we'll get our original selection back by going to the Select menu and choosing Load Selection. In the Channel drop-down, choose the selection you saved earlier, box in my case, and then click OK. Go to Edit, Fill, and with the content set to black, click OK to repair the hole we created in the mask. Notice that the little white area in the mask is now gone. Press Ctrl D, Command D on a Mac, to deselect the marquee selection. We are now ready to take out the stray hairs. With the mask selected, choose the color white, and with a small soft brush, let's begin brushing out the stray hairs. You'll notice that it does a great job of removing the hair and keeping the background intact. In part two of this tutorial, we'll lessen the distraction of the clumps of stray hairs using Liquify. Click on the link below this video to get to it. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial.
To learn more about Valley Photo Workshops, I hope you'll visit the site, valleyphotoworkshops.com. Thanks for watching.